Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and by your Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Questions have a way of changing your life. Will you marry me? Would you come to our university to study? Will you come work for us? Do you want to try some of that decadent chocolate lava cake? <laughs> Changing your life. Have you ever considered becoming a pastor? If you're a member of a church, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Questions have a way of changing your life. We hear a powerful message in the Gospel of John today as we celebrate what is called the Reign of Christ Sunday. In this text, Jesus is on trial. The authorities have all called for his crucifixion and he stands before Pilate, the Roman governor. In Roman trials, the governor asks the questions and the prisoner answers the questions. So Jesus stands before Pilate and Pilate asks, are you the king of the Jews? But Jesus has a question as well. Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? The question Jesus asks could have changed Pilate's life. Now, it's not clear whether Pilate really knows what he is asking. He is looking at Jesus through a political lens, and he thinks Jesus is coming to gain earthly power. Well, later, Jesus answers he is a king, but unlike any that they have seen. No earthly troops, no dominion over a territory. The kingdom is not like any here and now, but his kingdom is real. His reign, his power revealed every time to everyone who listens to truth and puts that truth into action, especially in our relationships with one another. So Jesus' question contains a fundamental truth. I like to think that the truth is Pilate's life, your life, my life, are not really changed if our only experience of Jesus comes from what other people tell us about him. Pilate's life, your life, my life, will be totally transformed if we have a personal experience of Jesus' love and his reconciling work in our lives. Jesus is the one who pours out that love that changes lives. Jesus is a kind of king who rules over our hearts and our minds if we let him. Opening our hearts and accepting him for all the gifts that he brings. Your life won't be changed by simply listening to someone talk about their own experience. You have to create enough space, as Mr. Mark just said a few moments ago, to listen for Jesus. That's how the reign of Christ is released into our hearts. Are you ready to let Jesus' questions change your life? 2,000 years of Christian experience demonstrates that Jesus asks a lot of questions, every one of which will change your life if you listen. I once heard a pastor share some questions related to this text in particular. He suggests, Jesus might say, it's nice that you wear a cross around your neck, but do you have my spirit in your heart? Jesus might ask, it's good that you know that you're a sinner, but are you ready to actually confess and then do something to change with the help of God's grace? Is it, oh, it, it is good to be a member of a church, but are you simply an observer of your faith or are you a believer and get your hands dirty in the work of the world? The pastor goes on to say, that he can't imagine Jesus ever coming to him at one point and saying, asking him, how many scripture passages have you memorized? But instead asking, how much of the scripture did you live out? He won't ask, 
How many times did you receive communion, but how did your sharing of the bread of life make you more Christ-like? It's not how often do you hear a sermon or preach a sermon about forgiveness, but how often do you forgive? It's not how much earthly wealth you amass, but how did you give away what the Lord God graciously gave to you? Jesus may ask us, how often did you not just pray for justice and peace in the world, but how did you actually work to make the world more just? Well, that's, those are lots of questions, right? And we worship here in the space where we worship a living God in the person of Jesus Christ the beginning and the end, the one who has knitted us together, the one who loves us and will be with us to the end of the age. It is in this sacred space, among other sacred spaces, where we gather and are inspired to awe and inspired to wonder about the abundance of God's grace in the world. It is here in regular worship of God and in our daily practices of our faith that inspire us to answer the questions of faith and then act out those convictions to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Questions have a way of changing our life. In other words, do you really want Jesus? to truly lead you, to guide you, to teach you, and to change you? Well, I hope the answer is yes. But if not yes right now, then I hope yes soon. There are so many reasons why we hedge to answer the questions that Jesus asks. Like Pilate, we may not really know what we're getting into. We may have only heard about what a life of faith might look like, and what that's all about. And maybe we're only willing to participate at an arm's length without really getting our hands dirty. The answer is complicated because our life and our times that we are living through are complicated. A global pandemic, inflation on the rise, racial tensions in our neighborhoods and the news from someone else's neighborhood the cognitive dissonance of a reality of the present day. It all feels too overwhelming. How do you make sense of the world around us? How do we make sense of the frailty of our humanity and our institutions when sometimes we feel our institutions fail us? Where do you find hope? And how does gratitude prevail when all around us feels like it is crumbling into ruins? Well, there's a way forward. And the way forward is together. Forward together. It is for people of faith to move forward into the world knowing that Jesus Christ is a new kind of king, for a new kind of kingdom, one that is present here and also not fully realized. It's now and not yet. It just so happens that Forward Together is the title of our annual stewardship campaign for 2022. Maybe it's no coincidence at all. Forward Together, to nurture, to engage, to encourage. This time of year, it's an intentional effort to help us answer the questions that Jesus asks of us. And just as the reign of Christ is now and not quite yet, so too is our campaign. And we are grateful. And we're not quite where we need to be. What might we be able to do? What are we called to do as individuals and collectively as a community of faith to help bring the kingdom of God here on earth? To help make it more of a reality? Well, the stewardship team and the church council are grateful for 100 individuals and families who have made financial contributions 
to our stewardship campaign at First Congregational Church for 2022. Well, we haven't heard from all of you. And I know that these are not easy times. The financial picture in 2020 was full of gratitude. The story in 2021, it's a little bit more complicated. And there's a lot of uncertainty for 2022. As of today, we sit under 50% of our goal of $900,000 to support the mission and ministry here. It makes sense that we name the truth out loud. We hear it in the text today. But the goal by council that was established to try to meet the opportunities for mission and ministry compels us to ask deeper questions. This campaign includes our commitment to our neighbors and the larger church, but also helps sustain and empower the worship and the music life, the personnel, the building operations, the faith formation and mission at First Church. They're all part of the mission engagement story that you all have a part to tell about how God is gonna shape our future together. The campaign goals for 2022 also address previously identified long range plan goals from the congregation and the leadership that have been unrealized and unfulfilled since 2016. Staff cost of living increases, the hiring of a full-time communications manager. Sometimes we have to name a truth. The Forward Together campaign acknowledges that the challenges of where we are in our own spiritual lives, and it beckons us to listen. It asks us to pay attention to the ways we can nurture our faith in the coming year. Think about how you're gonna examine your own faith and your own prayer life in the year to come. Your own spiritual practice with scripture. Your building of relationships that deepen, that are deep and meaningful. Forward Together recognizes that in order to help us realize God's kingdom here on earth, all of us need to engage in the work of ministry in some way through the new First Serves Monthly Mission Initiative, through supporting the music ministries, bread, the Bible study, small groups. Forward Together also compels us out of these walls and into the world to encourage others in ways that are helpful and kind. So if you have already turned in your campaign pledge for 2022, we thank you. And if you have brought it this morning, we thank you as well. And there'll be an opportunity during the time of the offering for you to put those in the offering plate this morning. But if you forgot your form, or if you're in a place of deep gratitude and recognizing that you have the ability to give more, there are forms outside of the sanctuary this morning for you to pick up as you leave so that you can prayerfully consider how you gratefully and thankfully respond to what God has graciously given to you in Jesus Christ. But some of you maybe have never thought about giving to the life of a church or hearing about a mission story at First Congregational Church. And if you haven't, I invite you to consider it now. Consider the impact that, you, that your participation can be in the body of Christ to help make a community of faith move forward together. Because the vision cast for us at First Congregational Church is God's mission. It's not several little missions doing separate things in some dissonant way. It's a vision where we become a more faithful and more spiritually nurtured people so that we can engage and encourage a more just and loving world. It means that we're gonna to have to dream a little and listen to the questions God is asking us. To be a people of hope means to imagine how we might live differently if the kingdom of Christ reigns here in our lives in a reality right now. What is God calling us to? How might we serve the community and our neighbor to create a more just and loving world? Well, Friday afternoon, we had an example of that. And 30 families of the 35 families who are part of Child Care Wonderland, a daycare center across the street from the church, 
came into our sanctuary. And they heard these words. From your prayerful and thoughtful consideration, they heard the words, we're going to cover your child care expenses for the month of December. And hallelujahs went up and praise be to God went up. When they realized that our community of faith asked a different question. Ask Darren Lundy of Cameron's Cookies who uses our kitchen every week to make delicious chocolate chip cookies. Ask him if our listening and our questions of our faith made a difference for him in building his small business. Dream with me a little. What would it mean if we partnered again with the Black-owned businesses across the street, like we did in the summer of 2020, to bring debt relief to their small businesses? Questions have a way of changing our lives. And on the day when we celebrate Jesus in a new kind, as a new kind of king and his power in the world, and on the day when we commit to our pledges to God for the upcoming year, we pray that Jesus' rule of peace and justice and equity and equality would come here and now to us and that we, meet, we might be a part of it. That we might share in the wonder of that power and the good news with others, to participate in it and to feel it made real and actualized in our own life. To experience the joy that comes from being caught up in it and aligned with the purposes of God. So may this new year, as we turn the page in the beginning of Advent next week, May this new year draw us into a different way of being, here and now, that we may be equipped to love and serve with joy, to recommit ourselves to the healing of the world for the sake of the world. Thanks be to God.